All right, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh Hashem Yahusha, Bahashim Rukakwadash, double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Greetings and salutations to you. I came upon the testimony of our Lord and Savior Yahusha in truth and sincerity. This will be a part two of the second Ezra's, the 11th chapter series. I'll be doing a seven verse sector each video for each part of uh, the overview of Second Ezra, the eleventh chapter. All right, so I'm gonna jump into it. Let's deal with verse eight. This is Second Ezra, chapter eleven, verse eight. As a matter of fact, let's start at verse seven so we can usher ourselves into verse eight. It says, "Not be held." And lo, the eagle. Who is the eagle? The eagle is speaking is speaking of the pagan Roman Empire of two thousand years ago. Rose upon her talons and spake to her feathers, saying, "Now, the words that are being said, the eagle is is the Roman Empire, but the spirit of the eagle speaking is actually the Holy Spirit." All right, the Rahakwadash, and we're gonna get that in verse eight. Um, and it's essentially it's representing the historical play out of circumstances of the Roman Caesars. That's what uh, verse seven is going into. Now, verse eight, it says, watch not all at once. Sleep every one in his own place and watch by the course. All right. Because each Caesar, each Caesar or king of the Roman Empire of the ancient pagan Roman Empire all right, ruled in a separate time. There was no divided Roman Empire of the pagan Roman Empire where you had two Caesars on the east and the west. Um, there were no city-states that broke apart off of Rome and they had their own Caesars. No, Rome was, was unified as a single empire, as the Achaemenid, as the Byzantium. Excuse me, I'm sorry, not the Byzantium. As the Achaemenid, as the... Um, as the Babylonian, unlike the Greek, because if you can remember, the Greek Empire was divided into several factions. You had the uh, Seleucid Empire. This is after the death of Alexander, so it wasn't them. They were. It it was not a situation of, as is written, watch not at all at once, because they were watching all at once. Because you had the Seleucid Empire, of the Middle East. You have the, had the or the Ptolemaic, get the Ptolemaic Empire of Egypt and Libya, Egypt, um, chiefly. You had the um, uh, you had the Empire of Cassander and his line in uh, Macedonia, and you had the Empire of Lysimachus. Uh, who ruled over the water ports of Hellespont, and the waterway, the traffic way of Hellespont, in the Grecian Aegean vicinity. All right, but in this this Roman structure, you had a Caesar, then another Caesar, then another Caesar ruling over the entirety of the Roman Empire. All right, it says, "Watch by course." All right, verse nine. It says, but, it says, but let the heads be preserved for the last. And, and when you go up to the previous verses, it speaks of three heads, if I'm not mistaken. Um. Yep, so when you go to verse 1, it says, Then saw I a dream, and behold... There came up from the sea an eagle which had twelve feathered wings and three heads. And the three heads are representing the uh, first triumvirate dealing with uh, Julius or Ulius, uh, Pompeius Magnus, and Crassus, which were the three most prominent men of Rome at that time period, and they made a legion an allegiance with each other, a pet. And keep in mind, this is during the Persian Empire, so this happened hundreds upon hundreds of years before the Roman Empire was realized um, of this era and of this stature. 
So this, yes, this is prophecy. This took this was written before it even took place. Um, so let's see here. All right, so I'm gonna read verse nine again. It says, "But let the head to be preserved for the last, because those heads were to be reincarnated um, at the end of the these twelve feathers. They were the first three feathers, and then they're gonna be the last three feathers." All right. And who were the last three feathers? The Flavian or Flavius dynasty. All right. The the um Flavius dynasty featuring West Westphasian Westphasian uh being the father Domitian or Titus, I'll say it in order, Titus and Domitian. Okay? And Titus and Domitian were brothers and sons of West Asian. All right? Now, let's continue. Verse 10, it says, And I beheld, and lo, the voice went not out of her head, but from the midst of her body. Now, the heads represent what? Caesar's. The body represents what? The Senate. The body. That's why in American government, when they talk about the Senate, they say, they'll say the body of the Senate. Or does the body have any other, you know, on this regard, so on and so forth. I briefly, you know. But the, the body represents the Senate. Because... The Senate was making the and remember the body of the 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 belly is the second brain, and so the Senate is actually another mouthpiece was another mouthpiece of the Roman Empire, having oftentimes just as much power as the Caesar, or more, when they're combined and unified. All right, verse eleven is. It reads, it says, and I numbered her contrary feathers and behold, there were eight of them. And the contrary feathers like still represent Caesars of the um, of this time period between the uh, uh, Julio Augustus or Claudian dynasty. All right. All right. Between that dynasty all the way to the uh, Flavius or Flavian dynasty. Those are the 12 feathers. And the eight contrary feathers would be Claudius being the first, Nero being the second, Galba being the third, Otho being the fourth, Vitellius or Vitellius for English speakers being the fifth, Westphasian otherwise known as Vespasian, being the sixth, Titus, and Domitian. All right, Titus being the seventh, Domitian being the eighth. All right? And those are the eight contrary feathers. Okay? And it reads, <coughs> verse 12, it says, And I look, and behold, one, excuse me, and I looked and behold, on the right side, there arose one feather and reigned over all the earth. And who was that one feather? None other but Ulias, Caesar, the conqueror. All right. Julius, he is that, he is that, um, As it is written, he is that feather that reigned over all the earth, pursuant to his campaign in Gaul, otherwise known as France. He conquered the Gauls. Uh, was uh, he, um, Julius had campaigns in Britain. He was the first of the Roman generals in Roman. Because at that time, he was a general, but he was the first of the Romans. To conquest into Britain, Britannia. 
All right. He conquered, he conquered Gaul. Okay. And he substantialized power and solidified power in Rome um, until his assassination. And he was about to go on another campaign before he was assassinated. All right. And that's it's talking about Julius Caesar. Sorry, it's under my eye, excuse me. <clears throat> One second. So verse 13, verse 13, it says, and, and so it was that when it rained, meaning it had rulership, it was alive, it had the men, power, authority. The end of it came, meaning Julius died, he was assassinated by the Senate. It says, and the place thereof appeared no more. So the next following stood up, which is speaking of Augustus Caesar, and reigned, and he had a great time. Why? Because Augustus Caesar ruled between 40 and 45 years. You know, chief scholars will say 45. You know, it, it, Augustus rules 45 years. That's why, uh, and that's the longest reigning Roman in, emperor in history, right? All right, 45 years is a long, that's a long reign. All right, verse 14, it says, And it happened that when it rained, meaning the it in verse 14, and the first, the first it's been spoken of is speaking of Augustus Caesar. All right, the end of it came like, well, you know, this is speaking of Augustus, like as the first, and who was the first? Julius, his uncle. I believe Augustus was the nephew of Julius. So that it appeared no more. And Augustus was always also, he also passed and died. Verse 15. Then came a voice unto it and said. Now, who is the voice? The voice is speaking of the spirit of prophecy. That is the voice. Verse 15 is speaking of the spirit of prophecy. And what is it going to say? Well, verse 16 is going to elaborate. It says, hear thou that has borne rule over the earth so long. This I say unto thee before thou beginnest to appear no more. Hmm. Verse 16, and this is addressing Augustus. All right. The, verse 16, the spirit of prophecy is, a, is addressing Augustus Caesar. All right. Verse 17. It says, there shall none after thee attain unto thy, tan, unto thy time. So when you go to the Caesars that rule after Augustus, no Caesar ruled long, long, as long as Augustus. Augustus ruled 40 plus years. No Caesar even came close. Not even, well, I'll let the scripture continue to elaborate. Uh, verse 18, or excuse me, verse 17. It says, there shall none after thee attain unto thy time, neither unto half the half Thereof, meaning no Caesar even um, uh, eclipsed or uh, overcame half of the time span of Augustus. There was no Caesar that ruled longer than um, 21, 22 years. So they, it didn't even come close to Augustus. All right. Didn't even come close. All right. Uh, let me see here. Okay, yeah, it didn't even come close. I'm going to continue on. We're at verse... Oh, see, I'm, I'm, I am already went past the verses I think I wanted to stop at. So I think I wanted to stop at verse... What was that? Verse 15? All right. But, you know, this thing, it's a... It's a continuation, you know. You read one verse, you got to read the next. Uh, so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna stop right there. Matter of fact, might as well. I'll keep going a little bit. I'll keep going. 
Might as well. Verse 18. Then arose the third and reigned as the other before. And who was the third? You had Julius. You had Augustus. And who came after Augustus? Tiberius. Tiberius Caesar. And appeared no more also. And Tiberius also died. He lived his life and he died. Verse 19. So went it with all the residue one after another as that everyone reigned and then appeared no more. I mean, all Caesars lived. They ruled all of the Roman Empire and then they died. Another Caesar came. They lived, ruled the entirety of the Roman Empire in the Roman realm and passed. Um, appeared no more, as it says. Now, let's see, verse 20. It says, then I beheld. Um, I'm gonna stop. You mind if I'm gonna stop here? I don't want, I'm trying to make these quick, quick to the point lessons. Um, matter of fact, I'm gonna keep going, but this, this, this is a lot to. I don't want to be making too many videos in this regard. I want people to be able to eat off of a, eat substantially off of one video. So I'm gonna continue. It says, "Then I beheld, and lo, in process of time, the feathers." that followed stood up upon the right side that they might rule also. And some of them ruled, but within a while they appeared no more. And the others, which are the other Caesars, they had their time to rule, but their duration and their influence was not as, essentially not as the major, all right, as the heads. All right. Verse 21, as the, you know, as the, as essentially as the heads, because the first three are the heads. All right. Verse 21, for some of them were set up, but ruled not. And that, that's speaking of the, the small rulership of the minor Caesars, uh, you know, the the year of the four Caesars, when you speak of these terms, you, some Caesars, you know, their their rule and their influence wasn't as significant as a Julius, as, a, as an Augustus, as a Vespasian. Some Caesars, some Caesars, the Roman Empire had more, influ, excuse me, the uh, Senate was more influential than the Caesar in regard to the comparing it to a Vespasian who had complete dictatorial control over Rome surpassing the powers of the Caesar, excuse me, of the um, Senate, excuse me. But when you're dealing with a Nero, he, he had a, a kind of a short reign, but his reign was filled with um, debauchery, un unproductivity. You compare Nero and Vespasian, don't even try it. Their, uh, their works... You know, the fruit of their labor and what they did to Rome, for Rome was completely different. Nero burnt, burnt Rome down, persecuted the Jews. Now, the one thing they both did, they both persecuted the Jews. They both persecuted the Israelites. Matter of fact, it was Nero, if I'm not mistaken, who commanded Vespasian as a general to um, quell the Hebraic rebellions um, roughly 66 A.D., and it was Vespasian usurping years later as the emperor of Rome, I believe four years later, seven in 70, uh, year of the four emperors. <laughs> because, because the year for four emperors started after Nero. So in 70 AD, it was Vespasian who came at the end of that as a Caesar, um, who was over the destruction of the temple and the, whole, and the sacking of the holy city of Jerusalem as his son Titus stood general um, in Judea, you know? Let's see here. So much, when you, when you talk about stuff like this, there's so much other aspects of history that you gotta even, you have to touch up on really for it to even make sense. 
You know, it's like you, you can show somebody a timeline, but if you don't put those fillers and those parentheses and those, you know, other aspects that ultimately make the timeline come to life, you know, it's not going to really, it's not going to hit the same way. It's not, you're not going to understand it the same manner. All right. Now, let's continue. Verse 22, it says... After this, I looked, and behold, the twelve feathers, twelve Caesars, appeared no more, they all died, nor the two little feathers. All right. I'm sorry. Give me one second. And essentially, the twelve Caesars appearing no more is the the end of that Edomite, the end of, the end of Esau ruling the ancient Roman Empire. Because after that, and you might have had a couple of usurpers here and there, like in Byzantium, you, even though Byzantium was ruled by Israelites, you had the um, the Macedonian king. He was an Edomite, you know? That was in the midst of Byzantine rule. And he actually was a pretty good king. But for the most part, after, after the fall of the Flavian dynasty, when you start going to Nerva, in the Antonine uh, dynasty on down to uh, what's, what's the brother name on down to um, Septilius or Vilius. then you go down a couple more hundred years with Constantine all those was Israelites those were so called black men that had preeminence of the um, Holy Roman Empire you could speak of um, in Germany in Austria, then you go a little bit further east, you had the Byzantine Empire, or the Byzantine Roman Empire, the Eastern Roman Empire, Byzantium, which was of of Russia, and then the Caucasus. And really, Byzantium ruled, at one point, a, a, a large portion of, a portion of the known world, you know? But, um... I'm going to continue on. It says, uh, but, you know, like a, the point being made, this was the end of the Edomites ruling Rome. Well, uh, at that time period. And they've come back today with America and NATO and the EU. This is the revival of the Roman Empire. But that was the end of their rulership of that period. All right? It said the devil should be cast in the um, bottomless, bottomless pit that's talking about the fall of um, the, the uh, Flavian dynasty and the fall of Esau of the, of the ancient world. Right? And they were, large part of them were put into servitude, large part of them were exiled and forced into the Caucasus mountain region. And then they came out, rebranded, rebranded themselves as Turks, that's where you get the Seljuks from, the eventual Ottomans, as they rebranded themselves as um as Jewish, they they converted to Judaism, that's the Khazarian Empire right out off the um steeps and right off of the Black Sea. You know. And they came out I mean, Azerbaijan and Armenians and See, these are Edomites that that took these titles. They're not Turks. You, those are those are Romans, and they're not Romans. They're Edomites. They always change their name, but they go back to Esau. All right. So let's continue just a tad bit more. In the two little feathers, if I'm not mistaken, is speaking of um. Um, Titus and Domitian If I'm not mistaken The two little feathers are talking about Titus and Domitian Verse 23 And there was no more Upon the eagle's body But three heads that rested And six little wings And the three heads was, Is what the, the first triumvirate But they came back They were reincarnated in the, As the Flavian dynasty you know, all you degenerates saying the reincarnation is not in the Bible, you are sadly mistaken. Now, we don't believe in the Hindu 
aspect of reincarnation is being born into another creature or animal. That's complete madness. But you do come back in your same nation and oftentimes your same lot. So if you was a, uh, a peasant in the ancient world, you might end up being a peasant in the modern world. If you were a, a general in the ancient world, you might have a lot of characteristics about you of war. If you were an agriculturist or a, you were a farmer, you might come back next life as a farmer. Or not, you know, but typically, I'm just speaking of trades and professions. You know, that's, a, that's, a, that's just a layer of the reincarnation. All right? So... Let's continue. It says, but three heads that rested, because they rested because they died. They were no more, as it says. All right, and that's talking about Julius Crassus and Pompeius Magnus. All right. And six little wings. And who are the six little wings? Galba, Otho, Watelius, Hespatian, Titus and Domitian, those are the six little wings, all right? Now going to verse 24, it says, Then saw I also that two little feathers divided themselves from the six. Uh-oh, let's read that again. You got to get them details. Then saw I also that two little feathers divided themselves from the six and remained under the head. Well, let's read the six. Who are the six? Galba, Otho, Vitellius, Vespasian, uh, Titus, and Domitian. And who are those two that divided? The two that divided were Titus and Domitian. And remaining under the head, who, who was their head? Vespasian, he was their father. He was the, he was the father of... And that's the spirit because Domitian, in his name, Domo means head in Latin. And you can't make that up. I just That's the spirit right there. Domitian, Titus, Titus, and Vespasian. Those are the heads coming back. And remain under the head. And, and the head, who is the head? Who was the epitomizer? Who who epitomized the head? It's talking about Julius, which in this time or in the reincarnation, it will be talking about Vespasian. All right, under the head that was upon the right side, for the four continue in their place, and who were the four? It's talking about Galba, Otho, Atelius, and Vespasian. Is where you get the um. You know, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to continue on. Verse 25, it says, And I beheld, and lo, the feathers that were under the wing, the Caesars that were under the wing, thought to set up themselves to have the rule. And what is this speaking of? That's speaking of the fight for the the throne of Rome after the death of Nero. The, after, after the death of Nero, you know, and, and the, that, that Julius um, Augustus Claudian dynasty, all right? Essentially, and it's going to the year of the four emperors. All right, the year of the four the four emperors. That's them seeking the and they didn't they these these um these uh emperors had no bloodline connection with um Julius. And the neuro was related to Julius. He wasn't direct. It wasn't a direct monarchy, but he was related. Um, now those ones in the mid, those ones that uh, essentially after that, all of those emperors 
and the other four emperors, they they wasn't they didn't have that direct bloodline relation with Julius. All right, verse twenty six. It says, "Not beheld and lo, there was one set up, but surely it appeared no more." And who was that once talking about Galba taking power? But Galba who was assassinated seven months after his him taking the throne. So he appeared no more real quick, shortly. All right. Verse 28. And I beheld, and lo, the two that remained thought also in themselves to reign. Excuse me. Um, I'm sorry. I, I skipped a verse. Let me start at verse 26 again, which this, verse 26 is speaking of Gaba. And I beheld, and lo, there was one set up, but surely it appeared no more. Galba, seven-month rule, were assassinated. Verse 27. The second was sooner away than the first. <laughs> and who's the second after Galba? Otho, who his rule was only three months. You know, he was assassinated after three months. Mom, them Edomites, so-called white men, was taking each other tatters off, man. <laughs> All right. Verse, um... <laughs> Verse twenty, um, verse twenty-eight, it says, "And I beheld, and lo, the two that remained thought also in this, themselves to reign." All right, and who were the two that remained? All right, Vit Vitellius and Otho. All right, Vitellius and Otho were the two that remained. All right, and they thought themselves to reign. Verse twenty-nine. And when they so thought, behold, there awakened one of the heads. How can you say reincarnation is not in the Bible? These people are so silly. Very foolish. It says, there awakened one of the heads. What is the awakening of the heads? What is that talking about? Who are the heads? <laughs> and his head is talking about Julius. It says, waking one of the, one of the heads... That were at rest, that died, namely, it that was in the midst. Shawap. Now, in the midst, there has it's an onion layer behind that. All right, and when when we say onion layer, meaning certain certain scriptures and certain parables, they have different. When you, yes, it means that, but peel the onion back and is. It means that as well. You know what I'm saying? Verse, it says, namely, it that was in the midst. And now, this is this speaking about Julius. Now, what does it mean that he was in the midst? Now, Julius was reincarnated as Vespasian. And Vespasian... Which he was in the midst during the the great triumvirate, was he not? He was the he was the he was the chief of the great excuse me of the first triumvirate. But let's let's speak just a tad bit more prophetically as him as Vespasian, which now it's considered history. But the testimony of Yahusha is the spirit of prophecy. So let's speak as his format as Vespasian. All right. Now, he was a key Roman general during the reign of both, both Vitellius and Otho, him being in the midst. Matter of fact, even prior to, uh, even going back before Nero, but let's deal with him being in the midst of the heads. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Let's deal with him being in the midst of the circumstances of the... Um, the the, uh, the feathers regarding Latelius and Otho who who uh, predated who essentially he succeeded those two you know so he was in the midst he was a Roman general for both of them prior to him prior to him usurping uh, ro the the Roman imperial throne now Espasian otherwise known as Julius was greater than the other two heads. Keep in mind, who were his sons, Titus and Domitian, just as Julius 
was greater than Pompeius Magnus and Crassus. Mm. Just as Julius was greater than Pompeius Magnus and Crassus. The abundance of the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Verse 30. In the reads it says, And then I saw the two other heads were joined with it. They were joined with who? Let's go back to verse 29. Because it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of Hebrew hopscotch that you have to, and if you if you're not learned, you, you won't be able to keep up. All right. Now, who was the head? Who was the head? Julius. It's three heads, but who is the head? Julius. Also, Vespasian. All right. It says, let's read verse 30 again. It says, and then I saw the two other heads, which the two other heads was Pompeius Magnus and Crassus of the ancient essence. But they came back in the reincarnation as Titus and Domitian. And I'm not, now we do know for certain that Julius was Vespasian. And, and, and what I say afterwards, which is right now, this is just pure speculation. But I could definitely see Pompeius being um, Titus. And I could see Domitian um, being crisis. And, and the reason why I say that, and if, if the apostles have gave a direct breakdown on who the um, reincarnation of Titus and Domitian is, then uh, I would love to be informed. But I'm just, I'm just speaking as a man. The reason why I say that is because Pius Magnus was a general. He was he was one of the Romes. If it wasn't for Julius, he might it, it, we might be talking about Pompeius rather than Julius. He was a chief general of Rome, and if it wasn't for Julius, he quite possibly would have been emperor himself. He was a military man. His defeat was at the hands of Julius. He was a military man. Now Crassus, he was a man of wealth. He was a a a, a man. Of riches. And Crassus wasn't a military man. He, he was defeated by the Parthians. And <laughs> subsequently gold was poured down his throat. Because of his known um, lust for wealth. And we know that Titus out of the sons of Vespasian. Was, he was the more militant son. He was right under his father during the campaigns in Judea. While Domitian, he, when he became emperor, he received the wealth of Judea that Titus had, had uh, acquired and Vespasian had acquired. Domitian was really the, the riches of them all because he was the one to inherit that wealth. You know, and that's actually where the Colosseum uh, and so on and so forth was created. But see, that aspect is that's that's. Hypothetically speaking, you know, and I speak as a man in that regard, but I'm continue on. Verse 30, it says, and I saw that the two other heads were joined with it. Verse 31, and behold, the head was turned with them that were with it and did eat up the two feathers under the wing that had that would have rained. All right. And essentially, this is that head speaking of Aspasian. All right. Now, verse 30, I don't want to skip the essentially the two other heads were joined with Vespasian with Titus and his son, or Titus and Domitian, the sons of Vespasian. Verse 31. Uh Espatian, it said, did eat up. That means that he plotted against this. He applied it against um, 
and assassinated the two prior, the two feathers, the emperors, Otho and, and Watelius. All right, and this is what ushered in the, the Flavius dynasty. Verse 32, it says, but this head was the whole earth, like verse 32, but this head put the whole earth in fear and bear rule in it over all those that dwell upon the earth with much oppression. And it had the governance of the world more than all the wings that had been. And that's essentially going to the consolidation of power by Vespasian, have a complete power over Rome in its city, in its uh, polis jurisdiction, as well as its profane jurisdiction, which meaning essentially outside the city, outside the temple. So it's the further provinces of Rome as well. More so than all other Caesars. It's a dictatorial power that Vespasian had consolidated. You know, something of the, of the amount of Adolf in, in Germany. Supreme leader one could say but not in the Germanic sense in the, in the Roman sense he also was the emperor who was responsible for the fall of Judea in 70 AD and see this is this is prophecy as well matter of fact let's let me see here I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it with this one right here and we're going we're going to take it up some more on another lesson but I wanted to, to get some precepts for that last verse regarding Ju uh, Judea in 70 AD and Vespasian and his livelihood see this is also written in prophecy This is Revelation chapter 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Now, who is the woman? Well, who is the serpent? <laughs> Sometimes we assume people are just going to catch on to what we got to break it down, man. Who is the serpent? The serpent is talking about the Edomites, essentially the Roman Empire in its, in its first essence. Now, it depends on the context that you're reading about. It can be speaking of the Roman Empire. Now, this context is talking about the Roman Empire. But you, all, you have to also understand America and NATO and the EU is also the Roman Empire. They are the revival of the Roman Empire. And who's ruling these nations? Esau. Es the serpent is talking about Esau. Now, you can't just say Esau because guess what? The Russians are Esau, but the Russians are not a part of Rome. They're not a part of NATO. They're not part of EU. The Turks in Turkey, they're, they're um, Edomites, but they're not a part of Rome, they're not a part of NATO, and they're not a part of the EU. Well, actually, the Turks are part of NATO. But prophetically speaking, they're not a part of the beast. They're not a part of the EU. <laughs> you know? And they, they're not really allied with the European nations. All right? It was, the, it was NATO. Oh, I, I don't want to make this lesson too long, but... Let's continue. It says, Revelation chapter 12, verse 15. It says, And the serpent, which the serpent is speaking of the Roman Empire ruled by the Edomites. All right. The 12, the 12 feathers, essentially. That period. So-called white man. All right. It says, And the serpent cast out of his mouth 
water as a flood after the woman. And who is the woman? It might tell you right here. Well, the woman is speaking of Israel, the nation of Israel. This is Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And see, this is what people like Vokel call Hebrew hopscotch. But how, would, how else would you know what the woman is? How else would you know what the serpent is unless you go into the biblical encyclopedia and look it up? You have to go to the different, different parts of the Bible, answer other aspects of the Bible. You can't just read the verse and just, oh, I just read that verse. No, you have to substantiate how you, what that verse means. And, it's, and the answers are, are coded in different parts of the Bible. So this is Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Sun represents chief wisdom. And the moon was on her feet, which represents knowledge. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. Which the 12 stars represent um, 12 tribes of Israel, also represent understanding. All right. Those 12 stars represent 12 tribes of Israel. And how do we know what the stars are? When you go in Genesis, it tells you that you know, the Lord will liken his Abraham seed as to, to the stars of heaven. All right. See, this is how you understand these things. All right. Also, let's get another scripture so you understand what the, what the, who the woman is. What's it? I think that's Isaiah 5 and 7. I'm not a good precept puller. I have likened. No, that's not, that's not what I want. That's a good one, but that's not the one for a woman. Let me see. That's a, is it Jeremiah 6 and 2? Yep. Jeremiah chapter 6. Verse two, I have likened the daughter of Zion, which the daughter of Zion is, is talking about the nation of Israel. To Zion represents the, the people of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Mount Zion is, is talking about the people. It's not talking about an actual mountain. It's like God isn't talking about an actual mountain. It's talking about the Russians. It's talking about that, that people. All right. Even though Gog means mountain, which mountain represents nation. All right. So I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. See? So this is how you understand who that woman is. The Lord is likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. All right. So we understand what the woman is or who the woman is. All right. So also, let me get another precept to substantiate my apologia. Let's go to Isaiah. So we understand who what those floodgates are. And what is what is that water? What is that flood? It's Isaiah chapter 17, verse 13. It says, the nation shall rush like the rushing of many waters, talking about nations at the gates, nations coming to conquer and kill, armies. It's talking about armies. It says, but God shall rebuke them, and they shall flee far off, and shall be chased as the shaft of the mountains before the wind, and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. All right. So the rushing of the waters, the waters is talking about nations coming to try to exterminate the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, the Israelites. And you're going you're gonna to fail and lose miserably. All right. But let's go back to, what was that, Revelation Revelation 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse... 15, it says, and the serpent I don't want to make it too long. But we but the serpent is speaking of um Esau Edom. And it's talking about Rome specifically in this context. It says, and the serpent 
Matter of fact, I'm going to just read it anyway. Shoot. Let's go. To, now, this is, you got to understand, this isn't written in order. A lot of these prophecies and revelations especially, they'll jump a couple thousand years, then they'll go back another year. Excuse me. They're like, they'll jump a thousand years, then they'll go back a thousand years. Then it might jump up another 300 years. You got, it's real. It's not in order, if I may. So this is Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. It says, and there was war in heaven. M M Allah or Michael and his angels. <laughs> I was at a situation uh, in a, a Egyptologist individual was speaking to Michael, the art angel. <laughs> you, would you like to you know, explain where these terms come from? And if we utilize these terms, will we just use them for brief moments of time and we use them for points or will we actually believe in these these oracles? These guys love using the Bible. They love using biblical terminology, but then still at the same time like to push idol worship and the worship of, of, of the stars and Chaldean worship. This is what our people do, man, especially in this city of Atlanta. They're real big with this Chaldean madness. Soothsayers and astrologers. And they and they they not they don't know how to count up. They can't count up according to the spirit. They can't truly measure the time diligently. Because they don't understand these prophecies. That's how you truly the prophecies are true numbers. That's true numerology. Alright. See, if you ask them like, for instance, in verse six. You ask them about the three score days and or, or thousand two hundred and three score days. They they don't know they don't they know what, talk, what that's talking about, right? Verse seven, it says, and there was war in heaven. And this is talking about actual physical war in the heavens with the chariots. We call them chariots. Our forefathers called them chariots in slavery. They said, "Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to take us home." The chariot in the Bible calls them chariots. The world calls them UFOs. They call them unidentified, unidentified flying objects or UAPs, un, 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 unidentified aerial phenomena. They're unidentified to you, but those are the vehicles of the Heavenly Father. Right? And they've been here for thousands. Of, they've always been here. Throughout history, they've always been here. All right? And your technology, Esau's technology, can't even compare to the technology of the angels. All right. It says, there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels, which Michael, the archangel, and the, the vehicles that the other angels are going to be in, they're going to fight against the dragon. And who is the dragon? Dragon is talking about Esau. All right. The so-called white race. And the power structure of Esau, not not your average white man who's fucking got him a a, a real estate license or 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 is, or is working up 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 in downtown, you know, somewhere you know with his little suit and tie, you know, making a hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars a year. Not him. We talking about the kings of the earth. We talking about trillionaires. We talking about people who. Who don't even make Forbes? They 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 make so much money. They their money is secretive. You, we talking about people who more powerful and more influential and who who actually control economies, man. All right, that's the head of. They are the head of the dragon. As Julius was the head of Rome. As the wealthy, you have many wealthy businessmen, a part of the Senate and not a part of the Senate of ancient Rome, who held major power, greater than the Caesars. And these, I'm talking, these, that's the real dragon, man. But they're the one pushing these policies and making the society move at how it moves. But see, all you Edomites, the whole white race, so-called white, not, not based upon how you look. But if you descend from Esau, Edom, 
All of y'all gonna pay for what the hell they did and what you did, because you wicked as hell too. All of you wicked. All right. It says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon, which the dragon is speaking of Esau, and the dragon fought in his angels, which is talking about your F thirty fives, your Raptors, your the different um, aerial vehicles that Esau has, the different the space force. Now, let's see what the scripture says. Verse 8, and prevailed not. So Esau, the dragon is not going to prevail against the angels. They're about to lose miserably um, with intergalactic. I can't say intergalactic, but aerial warfare. It says, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. I Meaning your power, your rulership. Was taken down and all of their vehicles, all them Raptors and all, all those Russian and American and British and French, all their their air um, aerial vehicles are going to be shot out the sky. They're going to be shot out the sky. All right. Now. I want to go back to where we were earlier. So that's another way. I got to keep going. I got to keep reading. So we can. That's the whole point that I read this is for us in verse 9. It says, And the great dragon was cast out. The great dragon that was cast out. It says, That old serpent. <laughs> that old serpent. That's talking about the serpent from the garden. That's Esau. Now, was he Esau? We talk. So you got to understand spirits. Before there was an Edomite, there was a serpent nation that was in the garden, which the garden just represents the earth. All right. And they were a nation of people, just like Esau's a nation of people. Now you had a nation of people that you could, we consider them today based upon their characteristics as the serpent or the serpent nation, which that was Esau in the ancient world before the flood. All right, and this nigga came back as Esau. All right, came back as Esau. All right, so it says the old serpent called the devil. Hey, <laughs> wonder why we call this nigga the devil, man? Which devil simply essentially just means deceiver. It says, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. They deceived the entire world with their madness and their witchcraft and their sorcery. Matter of fact, and we're going to get it. We're not going to get it on this lesson. But if, oh shoot, if you continue to read in um, 2nd Ezra's 11th, it might be, you might got to read the 12th chapter. It speaks about how the, those feathers deceive, or how the eagle deceived the earth. And the eagle is talking about the Roman Empire. It said, which deceived the whole world. He, he, and in order for you to deceive the whole world, you have to be in the top power seat. All right. The East Indians can't deceive the whole world. They don't have power over the whole world. The Samoans, they don't have power over the entire world. They can't deceive the whole world. The South Africans, the niggas in Sudan cannot see, deceive the whole world. They don't have power and jurisdiction to do something like that. The Japanese can't deceive the whole world. But Esau can. America can. The infrastructure of NATO and the EU can. Shit, Russia can. Turkey can. When you're talking from a broad spectrum of them being a nation. That's Esau. It says, and his angels were, shoot, Israel can, the Israeli state can. What's wrong with these folks? You're not a Jew. They deceived the whole world. They covered up the, the scripture says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. A covering, the covering cast, man. That's a deception. They over in our land, man, is right now saying to beat us. Defiling our name, defiling our temple and our sanctuary, deceiving the world. When they're nothing but the devil, 
that the Bible speaks of, man. The serpent from the garden. The 13 families. It says, and Satan was deceived of the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Right. And his angels represent his power structure, his messengers, his his troops, his, you know, those his host is a cot, if I may. Let's say some heavy stuff right here. Let's read verse 10. It says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation. Ooh, it says, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Who, who's the accuser of our brother? He accused what? Who? The Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> Esau, Edom accuses us. And see, all this shit he's doing right now. And when it's all said and done, and before the Lord returns, the, the, the enemy number one in this is going to be us. He's saving the best for last. He, he can't just come out against us because he understands we got a, a power with us. He understands divine intervention can and will take place if he moves insufficiently. So he's trying to prepare himself the best way possible to deal with us, the Hebrew Israelites. And the man of great millstone, he understands you other camps, you other guys ain't right. They're not teaching the right doctrine. They're not even using the name Yahweh Shah. Esau knows great millstone are the real man of the Lord. This man knows that, man. The elite of Esau, the people, see, if you don't understand this Hebrew Israelite thing, you look at all of us as the same. But when you look a little closer, you'd be like, oh, look, they, they teach a little bit di differently. They, those individuals move their agas anastrofe, their holy conversation, their manner of conduct is a little different than the, than the other. The other ones, they're more robust and they're more trying to be seen. And they don't use wisdom that... Less spiritual. They don't speak about the elect. They don't go into the Hebrew. They don't magnify the name Yahweh Bashimasha. Look, see, these guys, they're a lot more consistent than the other guys. These guys do a lesson a day. These guys hit the highways and byways. It doesn't matter. Snow, rain, heat. These guys got people rising up all over through Asia, all over through Anatolia, all, through, all over through Africa. Pledging allegiance to, to, to their flag and their banner. Which the banner is Yahweh Bashim Shah. But those other guys, they're more stationary. They, they don't have that much fruit. They're not internationally known. They're not in the, See, when you look at it closely and you look closer, you can see who the real men of the Lord are. These guys, see the UFOs, the chairs, they're always over their camps. Why these guys always record? Why Great Millstone always recording UFOs? Why these other guys never recording UFOs? And what we show you on the camera is only a fraction of how many chariots that we see. We see chariots, some brothers, on the daily. And you can bear witness. It's not like we lie. You can, you can look at our videos and see. The brother Taz, when we was doing a, a lesson with um, some, some brothers that came from, out, from some of the D.C. brothers. And, you know, that was spiritual because D.C. is the uh, head of America. Some of the D.C. brothers in town, right in the back of the window, the brother of the Tazawa, I'm talking about how, how essentially, you know, the, the, way this, the way it's going to end up. He'll talk about the same thing I'm talking about right now, <laughs> about how at the end that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be clear who the man of the Lord is and they're going to have to deal with the true prophets. That's exactly what I'm talking about right now. And he said, he said, what did he say? He said, we can't do shit. As soon as he said that, 
a chariot, a huge chariot came through um, on the back window and flew and descended from the heavens. He said, what? Get the journal on the line now. We can't do shit. Get the journal on the line now. That's what's going to take place. You sorry ass troops and hosts. You gonna, when, when the elect, it says that people should be willing in the day of thy power, man. Yeah, by Shimei is going to see. We're going to receive power after the Holy Spirit. Get the Jew on the line now. You understand? It says, now it's come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Let's go, man. Which accused them before our God day and night. And that's what they accused us of. They accused, of us, they accused us of blasphemy. They accused of us being black Hebrew. We're not black. We never proclaimed to be black. That's a derogatory term that you're using. You're going to pay for it. We're not, we're not black. I saw, I saw a, a, a young lady the other day. She had a sweatshirt that said black. See, the truth spreading like wildfire. Esau can't contain it. Why? Because of the labors of the elect. She, a chick had a, a, a shirt on said black Jew. I'm like, honey, we're not black. I said it in my heart. But we're not black. We're Hebrew Israelites. Aibadi Yasha Allah. Yasha Allah Yah. To be exact. Hebrew Israelites. That's who we are. That's our name. That's our, that's, that's our identity. Mm, 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 mm. I know I'm about to end up doing me another video because I don't want to make this video too long. I was trying to go in on <laughs> Second Ezra's 11 chapter. That was primary focus, but you know, the spirit quick enough, the flesh profit of nothing. But I think I got pretty much, and of course, there's so much more meat to get. So much more meat. I could always do more, but for time's sake, you know, and people's attention's sake, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. And give it all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Once again, double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. All right, and greetings and salutations to Yaakim. Shalom and keep the faith. Abba, Abba, Wa Kwam, Bakayayar, Mayashar Allah. Shalom.